Hi everyone, welcome to week two. I know this is week one, but I just wanted to go over a couple things because I noticed that some of you didn't turn in your contract. Your contract is right here. Just, you're gonna open it up, sign it, get it back to me. And some of you didn't finish this quiz. So this quiz I left open until Sunday at midnight. The end of the week for week one was Friday at midnight. So you need to, you've got an extra couple of days to get this one done. And then after that, you know, you're going to be not have any chance to do it. So you want to get that done. You don't want to get behind on that. So week two, you have a personal diagnostic and it says this week you will analyze and recall concepts and vocabulary from the textbook as you write a diagnostic essay that defines success while using appropriate pre-writing techniques, vocabulary, a controlling thesis, and topic sentences. So that's SLOs 1, 2, 6, and 7. Your SLOs are down here. So 1, read various assigned text. 2, write reading responses. 6, produce essays. 7, acquire academic vocabulary. So you can see why you're doing it. These SLOs are set by the department, usually in English. Uh, most of your departments set the SLOs for each class. And then it says discuss defining success with your cohorts. That is your discussion post. So here's your two chapters you're going to be reading this week in this Lumen textbook, Success Skills and Writing Strategies. You have an MLA sample paper to look at. It's just to review how to how to structure. I don't expect you to read this thing. It's just how to structure an MLA paper. Your paper should look exactly like this. So here's your header with that with an interesting title, not essay one. That's not interesting. Remember, your title is your most important transition. And then you start your essay, your last name and page number up on the upper right. It had, tells you kind of what these little boxes kind of tell you what you need to be doing. Um, and it, I don't want you to read this paper. I just want you to notice what a sample essay should look like. Then you have a video, Dare to Disagree. It's a little long. It's good. It it talks about writing arguments. And in college, that's really basically all you're doing is writing arguments. And the thing is, we kind of give the word argument a bad rap. It doesn't mean that you're fighting with somebody. It just means that you disagree with them and you're going to prove your point, your side of the argument, it doesn't mean you're going to beat somebody up or get mad or yell at them or whatever. It's just, that's just the word that's used. So you have to, dis you're going to disagree with people and it's okay. It's perfectly all right. So your homework is essay one, the diagnostic, reading quiz, success, success strategies, and reading quiz, reading strategies. So that's the homework for the week. So this is the whole schedule, the links to your reading and your essay. Here's how to use a Lumen textbook. I would watch this. This is a short video. I would just watch how to, you know, what you're doing, how to use it, the textbook. Uh, as I stated before, sometimes it can be a little tricky about noticing when the chapter ends because it's that little, it's way up on the top and a little kind of light text. So you want to take a look at that. And then you have the two reading quizzes. By the way, do not do any quizzes inside the book. So it'll have quizzes all the time. You can do them if you want. That's fine. I, go right ahead. But you don't, they're not required. You need, you need to do these two quizzes by Friday midnight. Okay. So here's your essay one prompt. It's a diagnostic essay. It's about success. It says using your notes, videos, lumen readings, and or handouts, answer the following prompt by writing a complete X essay. So... You, this essay is about something you accomplished. We kind of talked about this in class. Describe what you did to achieve success and how you reached your goal, were the obstacles you had to overcome. So then it reminds you that this is a tricky essay topic because people sometimes focus on their feelings. So if you notice, if you you know notice yourself saying, "I felt really great because I achieved this thing," that's not what the essay is asking you to do. If you say, "I was really depressed because I didn't." you know, get an A++ on this project. Again, that's not what this essay is about. It's asking you what you did, what you actually did to achieve your goals. So it's asking you to write a story, basically your own story about our favorite subject, me, myself, and I, right? Uh, some ideas for topics are to write about winning an event, earning an honor, confronting a personal challenge, or getting over a phobia. Your thesis should focus on your experience and obstacles. And then the conclusion. So... I went into this 
last during class again, I don't want a paper where you give me an introduction that tells me what you're going to tell me. Then the body of your paper tells me what you're going to tell me. And then the conclusion tells me what you just told me. I mean, I, that is so, <laughs> um, what eighth grade, you know, we learned how to write those essays, fifth grade. So I've given you instead these questions to answer in your conclusion. So at this point, it's asking you to answer these two questions. One, how can you transfer your experience with success to obtaining success on your college journey? And then two, ultimately, how would you define success? So that would be what you would do in your conclusion so that your conclusion is something that goes beyond just how I, how I, what I did. It goes beyond that. It brings your cohorts into this conversation. So the people that are reading your essay go, who cares? Why do I want to read this? You're trying to take that out further. You're going to attract your readers and they go, oh, now I see why I'm reading it. I get, I get how this applies to me. So file extensions, we went over two in class. And that is if you send something that is in the incorrect file extension, I'm going to give you a zero on your grade is your grade. And the thing is, I always get these panicky students that are like, oh my God, I got a zero, but I submitted something. So you should immediately think if you get a zero that you, I either didn't get a submission or it was, uh, I couldn't open it because it's an, it, um, Blackboard couldn't open it. So usually if you send something in that's just completely wrong or the wrong assignment, it could be the wrong assignment and you can get a zero too. Cause I do have students. It's like they send me their history paper or something, but usually if you send me something, even if it's just completely, completely wrong, you'll get maybe one point. And that tells me that you turned something in, but it was completely wrong. So if you see a zero, it's usually because I didn't get something or it was the wrong extension. So here's a Dropbox. For SA2, you just click on the Dropbox, and then again, it tells you what you need to be doing here. And it, don't write a submission. I want you to attach, you know, a local file. Here's the uh, extensions you can use. You can see there's no GDocs in there. There's no pages in there, so you can't use those. They won't work. Don't do a. Don't write a submission. This will automatically go through Turnitin, Safe Assign. It's called Safe Assign now. They have two different words. Do not, you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything. Once you submit your paper, you can go back in and um, look at the percentage. Okay. So this is how you view your Safe Assign report. You want to do that because if your safe assigned report is over 10%, you need to redo it or you need to at least email me and say, you know, is this okay? Can I keep it like this? Because here's some things that don't count toward your similarity rating. However, safe assigned does count it. Your name. So if your name is Sam Smith, there's probably a billion Sam Smiths and it's going to highlight your name. Your works cited page, sometimes it highlights everything on a works cited page. You don't have a works cited page this time. Some names of articles, names of books will be highlighted and that doesn't count. So it's just the only thing that counts is direct quotes. And this is used as a plagiarism checker. So if there's direct quotes in your paper without quotation marks around them, that is uh, academic dishonesty. You can get sent up to the dean for that. So you don't want to do that. So I give you the opportunity to fix this thing. And I'll, so if you get like 12% or 11% on a paper where you have a source, you might want to ask me, is this okay? Is this not okay? Do I really need to fix it? Because I'll just go in and check it in. Usually it's a no because there's a title or two or something. In this paper, you should be approaching zero in your similarity rating because it's all about you. It's There's nothing to quote. So here's how I will, you can look at how to view the comments I leave you and then your discussion post for this week. How do you define success? So the initial post says how you define success. So by Tuesday, not midnight, you're going to have written an answer to this. And then by Friday, you're going to have answered two of your cohorts saying, how does your experience compare with your classmates? Okay. So that's, here's your discussion post 
instructions. That's it for this week. If you have any questions on how to do anything, just let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.